The last part of our sign is to create some grass. It would be tedious and time consuming to try to draw each blade or blades of grass. For this reason, we can use another feature, step and repeat. Let's first draw a blade of grass, and then we will demonstrate how step and repeat can be used to create a patch of grass. Let's zoom in to the lower part of the design, just below the text. Next, let's take the path tool and draw a closed object that looks like a single blade of grass. Click on the first point. Click on the second point, but this time click and hold the mouse button to generate a curve. We'll keep clicking on the different points until we have something resembling a grass blade. To make a closed object, we'll simply click on the first point again. Recall that a closed object is an object where there are no open line segments. Once the blade of grass has been formed, we can quickly change the color to that same medium green that we used for the text. Next, let's adjust the point and bezier curve with the point edit tool and reduce the size a little. Now that we have our blade of grass, we can start to use step and repeat to create the patch of grass we need for our design. But first, let's switch to a new drawing and go over the different options in this feature. Step and repeat will make copies of an object and place them in a pattern. To show how this works, here on the drawing we have a single object. Let's click on the Arrange pull-down menu and select Step and Repeat. It immediately places a multitude of copies on the screen. The copies have a black outline and will stay that way until we click on this green checkmark button in Design Central. Looking at Design Central, there are three tabs of options. Let's start with the first tab for placing copies in a matrix pattern. The two upper values determine the number of copies placed in the horizontal direction and the number of copies placed in the vertical direction. The value below that will show the total number of copies that are being placed. The two lower values determine the distance between each copy. The first value determines the horizontal distance between the copies when there is more than one copy in the horizontal direction. Here the distance values can be set to a positive value or a negative value so that the objects overlap or even are placed on the opposite side of the original object. The second value determines the vertical distance between the copies when there is more than one copy in the vertical direction. The two buttons below to the left determine if the distances are between the copies or from left edge to left edge. Generally though, it defaults to between the copies. Looking at the copies, we are once again given grab handles to adjust the number of copies as well. The more we expand the bounding box, the more copies can be placed within the bounding box. While in this mode, the object can be moved around, and this will move the copies. This is helpful when you find that the copies need to be repositioned. The second tab will place the copies in a diagonal pattern. The number of copies is set by the first value, and the distances between the copies are determined by the two values below. Each value can be negative or positive. You'll find that it's these two values that can affect the angle of the copies. Once again, grab handles are provided to add more copies visually. The last tab will place the copies in a circular pattern. We are given the number of copies, the angle from the original, the portion of the circle the object will be placed in, and the radius of the circle, both visually using the grab handle in the middle of the circle, or changing the radius value within Design Central. Rotate objects, when checked, will rotate the copies so that the bottom of each object faces the center of the circle. When unchecked, it will not rotate the copies, but set the angle the same as the original object. 
Let's go back to the first tab. As with other effects, to accept a copy pattern, we can click on the green checkmark button. Let's return to our design and use step and repeat to generate more of the grass blade. Let's click on the arrange pull down menu and choose step and repeat. Immediately, we are given a total of eight copies in the horizontal direction. Let's reduce that to six. In Design Central, we will change the value from eight to six and click the green check mark button. To give a look of grass variety, we will adjust each blade differently. This is simply done by using the select tool and adjusting each blade to different sizes and widths. Now that we have changed the copies, let's align the bottom of the grass blades by clicking on the Arrange pull-down menu, hover over Align, and click on Bottom. Next, let's take what we have and create a patch of grass. Let's step and repeat the group of grass blades again by clicking on the Arrange pull-down menu and click Step and Repeat. We can set the copies in the horizontal direction to a value of 2 because we're only creating a patch of grass for right now. We could then select the second copy and mirror the group by grabbing the right grab handle and pulling it to the other side and release the mouse button. Now we are starting to get a patch of grass. Let's do this again and create another patch by using step and repeat. Reduce the distance to a negative number Click the green check mark button or accept button and now we have a patch of grass we can work from. Let's zoom out to the whole drawing. Let's combine the group of grass blades by welding them together using the weld button. Now we can copy the grass patch across the page by using step and repeat. Let's adjust the distance so that it overlaps the original just a little. Increase the number of horizontal copies so that it extends to the other end of the design and click Accept. It extends a little far so let's group the patches and adjust the size a little. Finally, let's weld all the grass together. Keep in mind that depending on the speed of your computer, this may take some time. To give it a more solid feel, Let's draw a rectangle at the bottom of the grass, change the fill to medium green, select the rectangle and grass, and now weld them together. Next we are going to remove some of the holes. This is done because we want to simplify the weeding process so we are not removing all the tiny holes. We do this by right clicking on the grass selecting Separate Weld at the bottom of the contextual menu, which is a little off the screen right now. Right-clicking again, and this time click on Uncompound from the bottom, which is also a little off the screen right now. Let's then hold the Shift key down, and click on just the outline of the grass. This will leave just the inside hole selected. And press the Delete key, removing all the holes. We are almost finished. Let's move the bottom text as well as the grass manually to get it visually correct. As you can see, the bottom of the grass is a little jagged. We need to make it straight or smooth. We could take the point edit tool and try to remove all the points, but there is a little trick we can use. Let's take our rectangle tool and draw a rectangle so the top edge barely overlaps the bottom of the grass. Next is to select both the grass and the rectangle and click Cut Out from the Combined Toolbar, a quick and easy way of creating a smooth edge. We have completed the sign. Now it is ready to cut. That's the end of this lesson. If you have any questions, check out the technical support portion of our website at www.signwarehouse.com.